Amen. The home equity loan is good for consolidation. And it's a substitute for an emergency fund. Debt consolidation makes sense. No, it doesn't. True. If you were in debt, here's an idea. If you have an emergency, the last thing you need to do is go further in debt. Dumb. Dumb, dumb, dumb. I'm going to put a home equity loan on instead of carrying an emergency fund, and then I'll be okay. Dumb, dumb, dumb. Myth. Debt consolidation saves interest, and you get one smaller payment. Truth. Debt consolidation is a con. That's why they, they call it debt con consolidation. <laughs> debt consolidation typically saves little or no interest because you throw a, your low interest loans into the deal. You take a no interest medical bill and roll it into the deal. You take a zero interest car payment and roll it into the deal. You take all these other lower interest things and roll them into the deal and you get the whole thing on there at 10, 11 percent as the second mortgage on your house and the aggregate of all your other debt would have been a lower rate. But you never add all that up. It's just, I want one payment. It's just not convenient. It's more convenient for me to give them more money. That's what we're saying. And here's the trick. You've got to remember, you cannot borrow your way out of debt. And that's really the spirit of debt consolidation. If I can just, if I can find a plan, I'll just borrow my way out. You cannot borrow your way out of debt. It's impossible to borrow your way out of debt. You can't dig your way out of a hole. If you're in a hole and you dig out the bottom, you're just going deeper. That's the deal. You've got to climb out of a hole. That's how you get out. And smaller payments equal to more time in debt. I need, I just can't handle the payments. And when I debt consolidated it, I, it, I was smart financially because I have a smaller payment. If you have a smaller payment, unless the interest rate is way smaller, then you are in debt longer. That's the only part of the variable that can work. The only way to have a smaller payment is be in debt longer. That's what brings the payments down. You're going in the wrong direction. Think. You can't borrow your way out of debt. Debt consolidation doesn't work. You're listening to the best in talk radio. Common sense for your dollars and cents. Up next is Jamie in Dallas, Texas. Jamie, welcome to the Dave Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Hey, what's up? Hey, um, I just have a question regarding uh, student loans. I have quite a few of them, and I was wondering if I should consolidate all of my student loans to one payment. Ouch, how many have you got? Uh, probably about four. Wow, this is not good. Okay, it's okay to consolidate student loans. You've got to remember with federally insured student loans, you get to consolidate them just once. That's what the law says. And if rates are down, then that's the time to consolidate them. So now is a good time to consolidate student loans because rates seem to be ticking upwards. Now, look at your rate and make sure that you're going to, if you consolidate, that you're going to get a lower rate. If you're paying seven now and you can consolidate and get six, that makes sense. But if you're paying six now and you consolidate and get eight, well, don't consolidate. It's easier to write four checks and pay less interest. But uh, student loan consolidation is the only time I say it's okay to do debt consolidation except to avoid bankruptcy. So get with one of the good companies that does this and make sure you get a fixed rate that is less than the total of your other rates, the aggregate of your other rates, and uh, no balloon payments, no gotchas, no variable rates. And if you lower the rate, then consolidation does make a, good, make a lot of sense. Does that help? That does. Thank you. Hey, Jamie, thank you for the call. This is the Dave Ramsey Show. We're giving you the same advice your grandmother would, only we keep our teeth in. So, our last myth. Debt is a tool. It should be used to create prosperity. The truth is the borrower is slave to the lender. You know, when I ran into this, I really started to grasp that it was hard for me. Because I got to thinking about it. Who was it taught me to borrow money? This was my college finance professor who was broke. What's wrong with that picture? A broke finance professor is like a shop teacher with missing fingers. <laughs> so I have a rule. I don't take financial advice from broke people anymore. I want to do what rich people are doing. I get to be rich people. Whatever the broke people are doing, I can love them, I like them, I want to, I want to help them be rich people. But I don't want to do what they're doing. If I want to be skinny, I'm not going to eat what fat people are eating. This is not hard, is it? You have to think about these things. If you want a marriage, don't go to some guy who's been married 16 times and wrote a book. <laughs> Find some old couple walking along like this, been married 62 years, and she's holding him up. Find out how you did that. 
That's worth knowing. Take that guy to lunch. He's got some wisdom. Find winners and mimic what they're doing to win. That's how we become rich. That's how this works. And so when you look at it, you know what the Forbes 400 is? The Forbes 400 is the 400 wealthiest people in North America today. The Forbes 400 were surveyed. They asked the 400 wealthiest people in North America today. Not your broke brother-in-law. Not your beer-drinking buddy with an opinion. They asked the 400 richest people in North America, what's the most important key to building wealth? I mean, inquiring minds want to know this. You know? Think about it. What they said was 75% of those replied that the number one way to become wealthy was to stay debt free. It's the number one key to wealth building. And here's why. Your largest wealth building tool is your income. And when it's not all going out the door with someone else's name on it, you have it to do things like investing. And it's your biggest deal. You take an old car payment, you take an old credit card payment, you get rid of a student loan that's been around so long, you think it's a pet, and you take those payments and start putting those things into a mutual fund, you end up with money. It is the muscle of your wealth building plan, your income. But when you're handcuffed, because it all has someone else's name on it, you're a slave to the lender. Myth, debt is a tool, truth, the borrower, is slave to the lender because when you don't have any payments you have money you stay in your seat <laughs> oh think about it how much could you save invest, blow, and give if you had absolutely no payments. But you know why people don't, why, why they don't get out of debt? It's because they've lost their hope. That's why they don't get out of debt. They don't really believe that they can be debt free. That's why they don't get out of debt. It's kind of like when I was growing up, my parents, we moved from the suburbs out to the country. Well, about the time I took off for college is actually when that happened. Now, out in the country, in our area, it was like five acres. It wasn't like 50,000 acres, okay? But my dad, my little sister got involved in the rodeo over at the high school in the rodeo club, and she was riding a horse around the barrels for a time. Have you ever seen that? Say yes. yes. And they bought her a quarter horse to ride the barrels. His name was Bubba. <laughs> and then they got tired of riding around the barrels, and they decided they were going to enter another event. And that event was kind of like the guys having rodeo. The guys have an event in rodeo called calf roping. If you've seen calf roping on ESPN or if you've ever been to the rodeo or something like that, the cowboy's sitting in the saddle, the calf is released, they ride out after the calf, the lasso goes around the calf, and the cowboy, the horse is taught to stop and start backing up, cowboy ties off, jumps from the horse, runs his hand along the line, calf is running, has no idea, slack's running out. About the time the slack runs out, that head pops, -nee 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 -nee. cowboy uses that backward momentum, flips that calf upside down, ties his feet together and holds his hands up for a time. Have you seen that event? Say yes. yes. Well, the girls have a similar event. Only they don't flip and rope calves because they're too big, the calves are, so the girls flip and rope goats. <laughs> now, I know it sounds kind of funny, but they were real serious about it. Hat down over the eyes, serious about being a goat roper. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's, it's a big deal. Goat roping is a real sport. I mean, they were real serious about it. So we had to buy her a goat to practice on. <laughs> and since we were gonna practice on him, we named him Practice the Goat. And so what happened in the Tennessee summer heat with the humidity standing in the field about this tall, I saw them out there with the goat. They grabbed old practice by the ears. They gave him a little boot because she's on, on the horse ready to go after him, right? And he's running out through there. He's going, man, this is great. I'm not a goat. I'm a gazelle. I am gone, baby. About that time, the rope goes around his neck. He has no idea. That, she ties off. Bubba starts backing up. She runs from Bubba down that line. That, that backward momentum, that slack runs out. She grabs that goat, flips him upside down, ties his little feet together. He says, what happened? I thought I was a gazelle. I must be a goat. I got to tell you the truth. They did that to that goat 15, 20 times a day all summer long to the point that they where they would flip in time they wore the grass off and there was a bare spot now if you've ever been around goats they're not smart but eventually old practice began to catch on 
I saw him finally. He's running out through there. He saw that bare spot, and he went, stop, pain right here. <laughs> he finally got where he'd run out there, stop and lay down. <laughs> we told her if we could get him to tie his own feet together, she could win every event. <laughs> you know what happened to old practice? Well, practice lost his hope, didn't he? He got beat up one too many times, and he just quit. He just went out there and laid down. It's kind of a funny story, but really, when you think about it in perspective of our lives, it's kind of sad. Because I meet people when they run out there and they lay down, don't they? Say, oh, you're always going to have a car payment. The little man just can't get ahead. Just forget it. You can't make it. And the greatest land the world has ever known. Plus, practice had to go back to the goat pen, didn't he? And the other goats are going, ah, you're not going to make it. That's just the way it is. Take it easy, man. Don't work while you're at work. Don't try to be a winner. Mediocrity, we're just goats, man. Just take it. Just go out there and lay down. That's just how it is. You're always going to have a car payment. You can't be a student without a loan. You can't have a master without a card. That's the way it is, practice. Get over it. i got to tell you, though, I'm the goat that got away. I'm over here the other side of the bear spot. And it's not really a bear spot, it's more like a mountain of dead, isn't it? And, and I've got lights over here, and radios playing, music playing, we're throwing the ropes across, shining, sending the internet over there. And, and we're doing all this stuff, and we hear people climbing up the other side, boom, 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 boom. We hear them on the other side of that wall. They call in, they're screaming, how do I do, how do, I do this, Dave? What do I do, man? I'm trying to, man, I saw, I'm doing this stuff. I'm kicking it. I see that head pop up occasionally. Occasionally, one of them will drop off over here, and they call in on our talk radio show, and they tell us, Dave, I make $62,000 a year, but Dave, I've been busted. I've been killing it. I mean, I, I've done everything you said to do. It's been hard, but man, I'm dead free! studying this for a couple of decades now while I've been doing it and teaching it both. And literally millions and millions of families have tried these ideas. So I'm starting to see trends because they're so, the numbers are so big now. I'm seeing things that are in common, common characteristics across these groups of people. And one of the things I kept hearing on the radio show and when I would meet people in person, they had this thing in their voice. The ones that were going to make it, the ones that weren't going to be a goat, the ones that were going past the bare spot, that were going over the top, that were going to make it, they were going to get out of debt. They had this thing. It's like an attitude. It's like, all right, what do I got to do? This is it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. And then I'd have other ones that would call in and go, well, dude, this is kind of like entertaining, sort of kind of, how would you maybe do this sort of kind of? What's your strategy? And I'm going, you're not going to make it. Well, why, man? You got to, I don't know, you got to go get mad or something. These other people got something going on that you, you know, we got to hit you or something to get you, get you a little upset. You know what I'm saying? You got to get, got to get fired up about this somehow. If you're in debt, deliver yourself like the gazelle from the hand of the hunter, the bird from the hand of the fowler. This is how you get out of debt. And, and the truth is, that night I was scanning the channels. I was channel flipping, and I hit the Discovery Channel. And, and on the Discovery Channel were the gazelles. They were out there gazelling around. <laughs> and I thought to myself, and I'm watching there a minute, and you know, you know if it's the Discovery Channel that the gazelles aren't there by themselves. I mean, you know somebody else is around, right? I mean, Mr. Cheetah is there looking for lunch. And the gazelles, you know, they have a little cheetah detector right behind their ear, and they see the cheetah, they go, uh-oh, cheetah! Run! And I'm thinking, whoa, this is how you get out of that. It's like life or death. you got to bust it, man. you got to run like you're on fire. The way you get out of that is you go, 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 go. You're getting ready to be in the gazelle burger. This is how you get out of that. And, and, you know, I'm watching this thing unfold, and I'm like, man, this guy's fast. And the Discovery Channel came on and said, you know, the, gazelle, the cheetah is the fastest mammal on dry land. This bad boy can go from zero to 47 miles an hour in four leaps. The fastest animal on dirt. And he's trying to eat the gazelle. This is how you get out of debt. You run! And look what he did. He picked out. He picked out the little one. He got him a college student. Hey! <laughs>
money, you can wander into debt, but you can't wander out. You gotta bust it. You gotta get it in gear. You go into the football stadium and you're going crazy for your football team. Hey, here's an idea. Put that kind of passion and enthusiasm into your family, into your destiny, into where you're supposed to be financially. Go get rid of some stuff. Get your life back. So you want the technique to get out of debt? Here's the technique. It's called gazelle intensity. You gotta go for it. You gotta get wired up and fired up. You gotta kick it in gear like never before. This is how you get out of debt. I don't care if you've got a master's degree in psychology. You gotta kick it, baby. That's how it's done. I don't care if you don't have a degree in anything. You gotta kick it, baby. That's how it's done. There are no other options. You can wander into debt in our culture. They will help you. They will draw you in. They will lure you in. They will tackle you. They will tie you. But you gotta to get out. You gotta be focused, busting it, kicking it. And if your broke friends are making fun of you, you're right on track. <laughs> you know how, we long, how long we had to look for a video clip where the gazelle got away? <laughs> You'll see what ends up happening here is when you start pulling these things apart, when you make the decision to bust into this subject, it turns the whole thing around and eventually you will get to chase the cheetah. <laughs> So how do we do that? How do we get out of debt? What are the steps out of debt? Well, with gazelle intensity as the overlay on all of these steps, here are our steps out of debt. You have to do these. They are very good. Number one, quit borrowing more money. You can't get out of a hole while digging out the bottom. Quit borrowing more money. You have to get these stinking credit cards out and have a basic plastectomy right here. That's the deal. It's time for a plastic surgery. These things are not a blessing. Here's the limited. Now it is limited. <laughs> Think about it. Sears, they make more money on the issue of your credit and the interest off of credit cards than they do on the sale of merchandise. I'm not mad at Sears. I buy their tools all the time at the flea market. <laughs> I'm not living this way anymore. I'm done. Citibank will see you. American Excess, I'm done with you. Discover that. Think about it. Here's the little miniature keychain visa. See ya. You know, and, and here's the General Motors card, the GM card. Now this one's great. You get a one to three percent rebate. Okay. So if you spend hundred thousand dollars on this, you'll get three thousand dollars off a car that'll lose six thousand dollars the first week you own it. <laughs> Let's put two stupid things together. Okay. <laughs> See ya. I'm not playing. I'm not playing with this stuff anymore. And, and here's uh, this one's this, this is hard to cut. This is Victoria's Secret. <laughs> They take cash. <laughs> you think that one's hard to cut? Try these two. How about Lowe's or Home Depot? Oh, oh, oh. I did it. I cut them up. They're done. Lady on the first row just passed out, but I cut them up. <laughs> I'm not living this way anymore. This is not a game for me. I'm not going to play anymore with these snakes. They bite. That's it. It's not good for me and my family. It doesn't put me in a position I can give like I want to give and do the things that God put me on this planet to do when I don't have any money. So the first step is to quit borrowing more money. As soon as you do that, there will be a problem though, won't there? I mean, you cut up your credit cards, you go out there right now in the driveway, your tire will be flat. You'll be back in here going, where's the crazy glue? So much for your theory, boy. And that's why we do baby step one first. Baby step one is? Thousand dollars in the bank. So one of the steps to getting out of debt is save some money. So if the alternator goes out in the car, you fix the car. You don't fall off the wagon and quit. You have that little baby emergency fund before you start getting out of debt. That's the trick. Next one is sell something. Sell so much stuff the kids think they're next. <laughs> Bust it. Name the dog eBay. <laughs> Everything that is not tied down with the possible exception of your house may need a good selling. 
Look at it and go, you know, I want that more than I want to be out of debt. Let's book. Let's kick this thing. You can always get you some more stuff later when you got some money. Sell something. A part-time job or some overtime. My grandmother used to say there's a great place to go when you're broke. To work. <laughs> Have these people call me up. I think I'm bankrupt. I don't think I'm going to make it. Really? How much money do you owe? Six thousand dollars. How many hours a week are you working? Twenty. I think we can solve your problem, son. I don't think you're bankrupt. I think you need to throw some pizzas and deliver some papers. Throw some papers and deliver some pizzas. <laughs> Let's do something here. Lift a box, clean a toilet. I don't know what it is. I've done all of it, and I'm not ashamed to do any of it. Some of it I'd rather do than others. There's no question about it. But whatever it takes, get up, leave the cave, kill something, and drag it home. This is a great way to get out of debt. Make some extra money for a short period of time. Am I asking you to work like a workaholic the rest of your life? Absolutely not. You know when I work today? When I want to. <laughs> To see if you work like no one else, later you get to work like no one else. Oh, this is, I'm seeing a pattern here. Baby step two, we skipped when we were in the super savings lesson, and now we're going to cover it, so we'll have one, two, and three under our belt after this, after this lesson. So the last baby step is baby step two, the debt snowball. Say debt snowball. Debt snowball. The debt snowball is a form in your workbook, in your form section. Make plenty of copies. Work it. You can go online and get a dynamic version of the debt snowball where it'll do it for you. The debt snowball is simply where you list your debts, smallest to largest, payoff balance, regardless of the interest rate. Well, Dave, wouldn't it be mathematically correct to list the highest interest rate and pay it off first? Yes, it would. But if we were doing math, we would not have credit card debt. This is about behavior modification. And so I want you to knock off that little debt so you get a quick yes, a quick return. That gazelle needs a quick meal when it starts running. Stop and get you a quick meal. One down, then you get another one, another one down, and another one down. And every time you knock out one more, you get this sense of power, this sense that there's a destiny to this thing. You get those attaboys, that emotional roller coaster doesn't, isn't a roller coaster anymore. It's heading downhill like a freight train. You're starting to win. You're starting to chug. You're starting to kick it. I had one lady in the, there was a big mom in the, one of the FPU classes. She came in there. She took her debt snowball down to one of the copy stores, had it blown up and laminated, put it on her refrigerator, big red thing. And every time she'd draw a line through that, and she'd knock those debts out. And it was in the refrigerator, all in the kitchen, and where all the kids were. She'd walk in there every, every so often. The kids said she'd walk by the refrigerator and say, you're going down. <laughs> the kids are like, mom is losing it. <laughs> See, it's motivating, isn't it? There's, so I'm getting traction here. There's a place to go with this. You knock off your smallest debt. When it's gone, you knock off the next one down. And every time you pay off one, you attack with every dollar you can squeeze out of the budget the next debt down. We're not doing 401ks at this point. We're not doing Roth IRAs at this point. If you are, stop it at this point. You're not saving for emergencies at this point. You've done baby step one. Baby step one is? Now we're totally going to focus on that smallest debt until it's gone. When it's gone, we take the money we used to pay there and everything else we can squeeze out of that budget and we attack the next one down. And that one's gone, we take the money there and everything else we can squeeze out of that budget and we attack the next one down. So what we do is we take in this example, JC Penney's is 150 bucks, the smallest debt. The payment's $15 a month. We're not going to worry about it. This one, we just pay it off out of the garage sale, right? Have a big garage sale, sell some stuff, boom, that small debt's gone. Now we take that $15 that we used to pay, and we add it to the $10 payment on Sears. And so now, at least we're paying $25 on Sears. But really, if you're gazelle intense, you're going to be paying a lot more than that, aren't you? Say yes. Yes. But at least what you used to pay out in debt, you keep paying. And so the next one is Visa. There's a $500 balance on it. When Sears is paid off, we take that $25 from JCPenney's and Sears. We put that on the $75. Now we're paying at least $100 on Visa. But if we're going to sell on tennis, we're going to be paying more than that, aren't we? Say yes. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to do MasterCard. Now we're paying $100 on that Visa. But when we pay it off, we're going to take that and add it to the $90 that we're paying on the $1,500 MasterCard. Now we're paying $100. $190 on that MasterCard. Are you starting to see that now we're paying almost 200 bucks a month on $1,500? Where I come from, that's like six or seven, eight months there. That sucker's done, right? And so we're starting to get traction here. The snowball's rolling over. It's picking up more snow. You keep going all the way down, you're looking at a $4,000 car now. 
with a $210 payment, but now we're able to pay $400 on it because we can take that $190 that we used to pay on everything else, plus everything else we can squeeze out of the budget and put it on the $210, so now $400 is going on this $4,000. Where I come from, $400 into $4,000, not counting the interest, 10 months, I'm done with that puppy. All of a sudden, this thing rolls, and 18 to 24 months is the average to be debt free. That means some people sitting in here right now can go home and just write some checks and be debt free with their house. That would be baby step two. Some people in here have a bunch of student loan and it may take them three years. The average is 18 to 24 months of the people that work the plan together as a spouse. Spouses in unity. Hook arms, yellow brick road. Together. We're off to see the wizard. Okay? There's a unity relationship lesson. Okay? Nerds and free spirits unite. And they do it with gazelle intensity. So we're not really skipping like, you know, like, like we are at Oz. We're really booking it because the cheetah's coming. Okay? And there's focus, there's intensity, there's a budget. We're committed to this thing. We're not going to live this way anymore. We've had that moment where we say, I've had it. Life is too short to be normal. When you have that moment, you change your life. It's absolutely incredible what happens as this stuff starts to unfold for you. The other thing is, it, the baby steps are the whole process. That's baby step one, two, three. Now we're going to move on to baby step four and some of these other things. In some of these other lessons, that's going to be retirement and college and paying off the house later. But you're getting the idea that if you can get your income freed up, you can win with money. You've got to get out of debt. The borrower is truly slave to the lender. You will know that the most when you don't have any payments. You'll feel something turn loose. Thanks for being here. Debt is marketed heavily to young people. This is not a game. Recently, one company spent over a hundred million dollars marketing credit cards to teenagers in one year. The fastest growing age range for bankruptcies is people under 25. That's right, you. Credit cards are not your friends. Car payments do not have to be a way of life. The typical millionaire drives a used car. Leasing, I call it fleecing, is the most expensive way to operate a car. You don't need a credit card to rent a car, travel, or purchase things over the internet. A debit card will do all of that. If you want to stay out of debt, simply don't borrow money. Live on less than you make. Of course, when you get ready to buy something, just save up and pay for it. 